Hey, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Happy Monday. Hi. Hey, darling. Hello. Good to see How you. How are you? Good. I'm glad to Good. be here. Lovely to see you. Um, so... As you know, I'm doing an IG takeover today for Liberate, which has been a lot of fun. And yeah. wanted to hop on. I was watching. Um, <laughs> your, I was watching your postings, and I saw that you live in Big Bear. I'm so envious. All those beautiful trees and mountains. Yeah, it's been great. It's been so wonderful being in nature. I feel like I've really had. Um, you know, such an awakening um, being here in terms of just having that sense of quiet. Um, and it's been great. Yeah. So um, I and I know you, you, you live so close to to nature as well and really get out there and enjoy it yourself. So it seems that way. It's just because I'm always in nature, but I'm smack in the middle of the valley. Right. Oh, it must be yeah. very, very warm there right now. <laughs> yeah. Sweating right now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so I'm so excited to chat with you because I have taken your classes before, um, as a fellow, um, teacher, you know, it's so amazing how, how eclectic all of these classes are. And really I've, I've gotten so much out of your classes and, you know, to the point where I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, every past life reading has been so emotional, but also so, you know, um, like unfurling aspects of myself that I didn't even know existed. And so I'd love to hear from you, like, wh why did you decide to, to t take this path? And, you know, what inspired you to do this wonderful work? Well, I didn't know it in the beginning of it. I just knew that it was, it had my excitement. Um, when I took Dolores' class back in 2006, it was the first time I was ever in a teacher-pupil kind of situation where I was actually interested, you know, throughout all of my school career. I was always a student having to do summer classes and catch up and like fail. And like I did my bachelor's in art therapy, I just barely graduated with like a, a C grade. Um, because it was just like, mm, just going through the motions, I just have to do this to like fit in or to be somebody in the world but I wasn't really interested until I found Dolores' work and, um, and you know, was totally absorbed and obsessed and just loved it so much. It resonated so much with what I knew um, on the inside. Um, it, it just resonated with that. But then mm -hmm. looking back at my career now, like 14 some years later, it was really because what you just explained that it is such a great tool to for people to, um, get to know their authenticity, their, who they are, to unfurl aspects of self that have been overlooked or disregarded or just um, neglected or because we're all such unique expressions of source, God, creator, you know, and mm. on this planet, what we face is this template or this norm or this standard of how we're supposed to be, you know, what comes with our bodies and how we fit in, all that stuff, which is, it's the opposite from being in your authenticity. So. There are many techniques out there. You know, breath work is amazing to do this as well. And so is uh, past life regression. It goes beyond even the, um, you know, the human current life experiences, but it delves into, you know, what else is part of the architecture of what makes you a human being. You know, and we find, you know, aspects of self that come or that are linked to different planetary places or realms or dimensions um, that go way beyond what we've learned we're supposed to be like as a human being. And this is, to me, it's very, very liberating because not just for a person themselves to experience this, but also as a tool to have access to in our society because it cuts right through all the judgments and the limitations and the xenophobia and the homophobia and um, you know racism all that stuff, it just makes it superfluous and it just, it doesn't match with who we truly are. And that's, yeah, I just see it as a tool for liberation, which has really my, been my drive in my own life. Wow. I love that a tool for liberation. Um, it's, it's a beautiful way of putting it. Let, let me ask you this question. Do, do you believe that everybody has access to 
their past lives? Like, just can everybody do this? I think yes. So I think yes, some people will take a little more time than others. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if especially the older birds like myself, so then we've been dinged around a little bit more and we've gotten more ingrained into believing what society dictated to us. So it can be a little bit more tricky to, for a person that has that experience to, to really trust that the information that's coming through them to let it in, that it is really the truth of who they are instead of saying, well, it doesn't match anything that I've learned so far. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, but, you know, in my experience, um, like I've, you know, I would say maybe in three or five percent of the cases, people do not get anything out of their session the first time or they don't see any past lives. But then I send them home with some exercises. When they come back, then, you know, it's they're, they're off to the races. It, it works. Um, your technique is so powerful and so simple and easy. That was the, one of the most surprising parts of doing your classes is actually just going to that place um, so effortlessly. Um, so my question is like, who, who, who is past life regressional? Like there's, okay, let's start with this. Why don't we remember our past lives? Why do you think that? <laughs> That's such a good question. I think, I think it's, that doesn't go for everyone. There are people that do remember their past lives, mm -hmm. um, but it's not something that is in our cultural narrative. But what I'm finding is that lots of people do have times where they remember they're in places they're traveling and they feel like I've been here before or you might have had this as well when you meet a person that you've never met you know you think mm -hmm. and you have this amazing like sense of like where did we meet before or how do we know each other or people that have recurring dreams um, of being in different times or um, so I, th I think it's all there it's just hidden underneath the belief system that we've been conditioned into mm -hmm. that just the imagination or it's just dreams or it's just these weird wonky feelings that you have Oops. i think i just lost you very briefly there oh. i think we're back yeah my wife oh off, sorry about that yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah these 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 people that that come into our lives that we know we have a soul connection to um and these feelings that we have that somewhat are undescribable in terms of the lives that we're living um, we can find answers uh, by looking into our past lives. Is that, is that kind of, you know? That, that's a way, like, if you wanted to know more about it, like, what is that connection that I'm feeling? Yeah, a past life regression, you know, would be very helpful to figure out what's, mm. what, what's the deal here. Like, how are you connected together? Um, and, you know, it's, to me, it's always super fun because it usually takes us way beyond what we think uh, what we think it should be or beyond the um the need to quantify things in our lives from our human perspective like you know your mm -hmm. your lover right now might have been your mom in a different lifetime you know it's kind of weird to think about it but yeah that's what we seem to be doing as in our within our soul family we travel through the different lives and we try out different relationships and get to know different parts of ourselves in that way you know we we contract into we say hey you know to this other soul we've been lovers, but how about we try, you know, I come in as your son or your daughter or whatever, you know, we try out a different relationship and shit, see how it works. Yeah, I love, I mean, that to me, that makes so much sense, right? When we think about our life's journey and having soul contracts, like it makes so much sense, even though when we're in the midst of it, it can feel like, why am I in this situation? Why am I even attracted to this person or in this kind of toxic kind of dynamic with somebody else? And a lot of it can be kind of, you know, understood when we look at our past lives and those relationships and perhaps we have entered into a soul contract. Um, so this technique is so powerful. Why do you think this Dolores' technique like really kind of gets you there? Because for me, it's like I've, I've done like a couple of your classes and, you know, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've ended each class in tears, but in a way where the experience has been so emotional. So I know that there's something so special in this process, but maybe you can tell me a little bit about why it's so powerful. Um. I, I don't, because I, I can't compare it to other techniques because I have not studied them. Like there's other people that, like Dr. Brian Weiss or Dr. Or Michael Newton or Paul Thomas, and there's other ones that pioneered similar techniques or had a slightly different angle towards it. Um, so I can only talk about um, Dolores' technique. Um, mm. 
I would, what I would come up with is that it's so extensive and, um, um, you know, she's had so many years to perfect it. And what I'm always finding is that in her teaching, there was this adv advocacy for the human being, for the human experience always mm -hmm. within the technique. And that really helps people to feel very, very safe. So there's lots of care taken in um, helping people to get into that space where they have access to it, but also to disconnect afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, to not linger in the energies of different places. She had to do this because she um, would experience clients having like actual physical marks on their skin of where they might have been killed, you know, in the past life. Oh, wow. Boring. So I find that in her technique, there is such care taken in really attuning to all different layers of, of our humanity and beyond in this whole process. You know, when we do a private yeah. session, there is an, at least an hour and a half of kind of just sitting with a person and interviewing them about their current lifetime to sort of trigger, you know, certain energies. So it'll be easier to go into the actual regressions. It's not like, you know, like we're lubing you up a little bit. You know, it's not like a, um, <laughs> not like just an immediate, let's go do it and you're gonna go into a past life. Yeah. yeah. And, and do, do, you, do you think that everybody has, you know, a message from a past life regression? Do you feel like everyone can really learn about their current lifetime by going through that experience? I, I would think so, but that's all what I see. So I can say, you know, I can speak for the population that I do not get to work with or that never do this work. But in terms of the people that come in, because the experiences that they go into, they are provided to them by their, we call it the subconscious mind, which you would term the soul or the higher self or authentic self. So it's the inner wisdom that uses this state of trance to give you the most appropriate experiences that are helpful and healing for whatever's going on in the current lifetime right now. So mm -hmm. that in itself, I think, would provide anybody with these healing experiences or, or messages that are going to be helpful for it. Yeah. Um, and um, I know we've got a few people who are on the live with us. Paul, hello. Um, uh, Trisha, David, James, if you guys have Laurie, any questions. Paul, hi. If you have any questions about past life regression or you've been kind of curious um, to try a class or even do the, the you know, a, an actual in-depth session, which I'm not there yet. I'm going to get to that point where I'm, when I'm uh, like brave enough to do a full session with you. Um, but if anyone has any questions uh, that they would like to ask, please pop them in the comments. And if you've had any experience with past life regression that you want to share, um, I know um, you you have you always share such great stories about um, you know past life memories and people kind of meeting them like finding out in real time that they can kind of substantiate the the past life regression. Um, you have such great stories of patient of. of of clients, I should say, that have gone through the process and then like after it have gone online and went, yes, <laughs> which is, which is so phenomenal. Um, what, what's one of your wildest, um, you know, experiences or stories? Regarding that, you mean? Like, yeah. Uh, having running proof. So actually there was one yesterday, um, a client that came in and, um, she explored an other planetary life where she looked different. She was slightly human, you know, humanoid looking, but it was a different planet with a different color sky. There was like a big bright moon that was in the, or a planet that was hanging in the sky. The sky was pink and red. And she was surveying the planet, um, um, feeling very, very sad because this great destruction had taken place that had like mm. destroyed half the planet. And she had a name for it. And I, I'm trying to remember it, Tiarmuk or Tiamut or something. And so I go to Google it, and then there's this whole story about this planet that um, was destroyed that might be the asteroid belt that is in our current solar system. Oh, wow. So, you know, sometimes you find these, you know, people come up with names or words, and you go Google them, and you find um, that, you know, it could be a real thing that, that we have knowledge about. Um, I mean, the wildest experience that, I've, that, I've, that I talk about quite a bit is... Um, is the that was made into a book the boy that knew too much of a woman that heard her two-year-old say like i used to be a tall german baseball player 
and um, she not knowing what that meant because she had no idea about reincarnation, mm -hmm. finally came into my office and tells me the story, also telling me that her son used to tell her that she used to be his mom in that past life as well, but that he liked her now better and that he remembered being up on a cloud, kind of looking down um, and saying, okay, there she is, I'm gonna come in through her and have another lifetime with her. And so during the regression, we, we went into her life as Christina Garrick, Lou Garrick's mom, and she was mm -hmm. able to tell me about these very trivial details, like about like what, their, what her house looked like, the kind of dishes she used. She would use German words to address her family members, knew the nicknames, charge keys that she was given, awards that her son Lou Garrick had won. Um, and so she came in three times and we would go into the same lifetime to explore different periods of it to the point where I asked her higher self, like, okay, why is this so important? Why do we, I mean, it's great, but <laughs> you know, why go back to the same lifetime? And it said that she was to sort of mine that lifetime for verifiable um, details that she could go and fact check with still living descendants and relatives and then write a book about the experience which is what she did. And her higher self said that the book would give access to more people to um, expand their mind into this um, reincarnation subject matter that normally wouldn't be interested in it because it would have this level of, you know, uh, verifiability or, um, but also baseball. Yeah, and that, that happened. Um, so that was, that was like, I mean, when I was in it, I was just running the session. I was like, okay, this is fun, interesting, but, um, Afterwards, like it took on its own life and it's just crazy thinking back on it, like how many details she was able to come up with that just matched live reality. And, and there's many more, you know, I love talking about it. The, an, another one that came in, it was about a year ago, a woman that came in for a session and she had not met her current life biological father until she was 19 years of age. So she had a question about it. You know, people bring in a list of questions, um, stuff about their lives that they want answer, answer, an answer to. So we, we did the whole regression bit, talked to her higher self, and I come to the part where I um, ask her higher self these questions. So I ask it, like, what about her current life biological father? Have they been in different lives together before or different places? And so this is what it said. It says, yes, they have been together during the Renaissance. And I go, great. Well, what was the deal? Who were they to each other? So her higher self says, well, she, the client, was Michelangelo, the artist, that he was gay, had many, many different lovers, but that her father from her current lifetime was his then long-term assistant. And my client then says, I can hear a name for this man. I can hear a name. And she had pro uh, uh, problems pronouncing it because, you know, different culture, different language. And I had her spell it out letter for letter, and she spelled me a word that was spelled P-R-I-E-T-R, Prieta didn't sound Italian to me, but we wrap up the session, she goes home, and then um, I do my do Googling, and this little paragraph pops up that says that Michelangelo did have an assistant for 25 years who helped him paint the Sistine Chapel mural, the, the ceiling, and mm -hmm. that this person's name was Pietro Urbino, so she nailed it, like, except for two letters that didn't switch around, it was so close. And this is, you know, these are the, the more, like, remarkable like wow sort of moments but there's often times that people describe to me like they might describe a wedding ceremony or a burial way of burying people and afterwards then we go and check it and you know they might have described a burial rite of a very specific tribe somewhere um, or a wedding ceremony um, i remember one woman describing a traditional hawaiian um, wedding ceremony so that stuff kept, happens all the time and you know, for me, coming from the Netherlands, you know, we're such a cerebral, rational culture, one of the least religious nations on the planet. So we don't believe a whole bunch of stuff unless we can feel it and see it. Um, for me, in the beginning, I would be sitting next to my clients wondering, like, are you pulling my leg? Like, this crazy story <laughs> blowing out of you? Is this all true? And so I was lucky to have, like, so many experiences that could be verified. And, you know, it was obvious that people didn't go into researching it prior to their session. You know, it was just so random and so precise mm -hmm. where they were just narr or pulling it out of their ass on the spot, you know. So um, that really solidified, solidified my belief that however crazy the experiences are that people come up with, that they're all lived experience. And it's really, for me personally, it's really a beautiful notion to know that we live in a universe that is teeming with life. 
and mm. so many different forms and expressions that there are so many different options for a soul to go into to experience many many different things you know experiences that might be like our human experiences but completely off the charts weird you know i don't know like lives as different alien beings or blobs mm -hmm. or energy beings or creator beings or living aboard spaceships being in charge of like plant life through a whole galaxy and seeding life on different planets i those things seem to be very very normal you know from within my perspective of doing this work yeah it's it's phenomenal because i think there's a preconceived notion that past life regressions are all past lives on earth but you've you've had clients really go back that first story that you told go back what millions of years or who knows whatever time that was in, in yes. every, like I guess what's really fascinating about your experiences is that time and space don't really, you know, make a difference. It's not, nothing's really linear um, with going back in time. And I'm sure you've had um, uh, clients regress to a future life as well, yes. right? What's yeah. that been like? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really all the same thing to me now, but you know, what the subconscious describes you know, over and over again is that there is no such thing as time from the perspective of the soul it's just a construct mm -hmm. that we use whenever we go into three-dimensional reality type of learning like the earth school you know the visible world around us right now that this is used as a way of learning it slows down um, learning uh, you know for us to um, catch up on the effects of what we're creating in our thoughts so we you know if we have like destructive thoughts we don't implode or explode on the spot um so it's very very slow that's what i'm learning and but it's it's um deliberate um but that in other layers of existence or other dimensional planes there is no such thing as time and from the perspective of the soul you know my human mind of course tries to approximate this or quantify this and just can but the model that i use is that we're more or less individuated parts of source that kind of decide that we split off in different experiences that are happening all at once or all now, mm. you know, it gets confusing, you know, when you start thinking from within the concept of time, and you try to figure that one out. Like my human mind just goes like, you know, doo -doo, over really beyond, over beyond our, our kind of understanding or consciousness. Um, or perhaps not for, for, I mean, I, I would, now that we've got a few more people joining our live, would love to kind of open it up for some questions or if you've had any, you know, particular experience with past life regression that you would like to share or any kind of questions that pop up at your end, please share them in the, in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I mean, I feel like the work is so healing, um, isn't it? And you don't kind of suspect that. We kind of talk about past lives being this kind of topic that could be really cool and fun, but actually in your experiences with your clients, uh, them coming out of the session with a great deal of healing, um, which is so beautiful. And, you know, um, to speak to my experiences, when I, when I first did your class, I literally met my kind of shadow self in my past life regression. And that was so shocking to me because I'd done numerous shadow, shadow work meditations and met that person. That's who I was in the past life that came to me. And it was so, it was so emotional um, and I remember like reaching out to you afterwards and like really talking about my experiences, but I also found it really healing because it kind of, you know, gave me an opportunity to really, um, understand why I had that experience and how to integrate that, those aspects of who I am. Um, and I do believe that these experiences come at the right time when you're ready to, you know, accept them. Does anyone have any questions? Hi, Jude. <laughs> Jithu. Scooterfink. I love that, that Insta handle. I know who that is. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Tr Trisha, Trisha asked a question before. Um, I think it was the, the planet that you were talking about. Um, uh, Maldek. Was that, was that the right one? I, was it different? I, yeah, I, I think when I Googled it yeah, last night, I did see that name come across and I'm, I'm aware of the name. I'm not sure if they're the same one or the same time. And I know Maldek or Mardak, um, you know, when you listen to um, the raw materials or um, those channelings, mm -hmm. I think it's brought up, but I forgot what the specifics were around it. But 
yeah, there, when I Googled it, there seemed to be a link between the two or people were questioning, you know, wondering about the link between the two of them. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, hi, Scooter Fink. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to ask any questions, um, go for it or, or share any experiences that you've had. Or if you're thinking about doing a, um, you know, an in-depth regression, um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask before that, um, yeah, and I can speak about the healing that you mentioned. I really mm. love the picture of your experience. Um, the healing, it's also not a, um, a cookie cutter type of thing. It's really different from one person to the next because we're also different, you know, within the context of doing a regression. And I find that extremely beautiful I, to see that unfold for, you know, I get to be with a person for five hours and I get to know them a little bit and feel them a little bit and then see this wonderful, unique experience and furl. Um, the healing happens really on different, in different ways during a session. It is, you know, people telling, be able to tell their story about their life to be heard um, in a way that they've sometimes never been heard before. You know, the internal experience of growing up on this planet to hear the feelings of that might have been um, suppressed as a result of mm. how they were raised, you know. But also just the prolonged contact with their higher self, their, their soul um, in itself, I find, I see is very, very healing. People report back after their sessions and they say, you know what, you know, we worked on these particular things, but this and this and that has changed around as well for the better. Mm. And then oftentimes, you know, during a session, there's very specific healing that takes place where like yesterday, the higher self says we're going to clear anxiety from the chest or we're going to open the heart or we're going to realign the chakras or I've even had people's like bones popping back into place um, mm -hmm. like, when they say we're going to adjust it now or vision being corrected. You know, it's not every session for everybody. So you know, I, I hate to think that people kind of treat this as a, you know, like, I'm just going to make my list for Santa Claus and it's going to happen. You know, this is not yeah. for everybody, but it does happen. Healing always happened, but it doesn't always happen, you know, in the way that we want it to happen before we go into a session. Um, so it's, and to me, I mean, it's, it, to me, it's really beautiful because it really, so there's those two levels of healing and there's also the, the understanding that happens, the connecting of the dots for the conscious mind to know mm -hmm. and to feel that there is way, way more to you that you might have um, known about. And yeah. then in itself, you know, I see people coming out of this, like, you know, I can I kind of call it spiritual Botox, like their face is completely relaxed and there's this mm -hmm. depth in their eyes that they've been able to access this coming home to themselves. And that is to me, it's really, really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, we need to like bottle that up, spiritual Botox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Start selling that. Um, yeah, but no, that's a wonderful notion, isn't it? Um, yeah. And just kind of being comfortable with the journey, right? Being comfortable with the journey. And part of, you know, what I teach with breath work is really surrendering and surrendering that, that sense of control. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, with what you do, you kind of, you're, you're literally kind of speaking to your client's higher self and, and then having them go on that journey that's so like integral um to kind of finding that 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 moment where you can like surrender to life and and know that um you know the more we kind of do this the less enjoyable our, our life is but we've been kind of brought up in a society that teaches us that we have to work hard we have to hustle we have to do this we have to meet all these milestones in order to be you know living a life and part of part of what we do with our with our clients is kind of saying it's okay to stop it's okay to surrender it's okay to trust trust the flow of life and that can be a really challenging notion particularly when you're going through really testing times yeah um jennifer hello catherine hi if you have any questions we'd love to hear them you can pop them in the comments anything to do with past life or past life regression I mean, one of my favorite books um, on past life is Old Souls, which is about kids that remember past lives. And it's a story, it's, it's a collection of stories of children um, that have come into this world remembering in, in great detail their past lives. Do you have a lot of uh, child clients, children clients? 
I don't. No, I was taught by the Lord's, you know, and the sort of the, um, we don't work with people that are under 16. Um, mm -hmm. Because oftentimes there isn't enough self reflective capacity to be able to do the work. Um, I've tried one time to work with a 15 year old, like his mom begged me like, please, my son loves this so much. And he's almost 16. Can we please do it? And it was a little tricky. Um, because yeah. yeah, it was a little tricky to, to work with him. So I'm not versed in working with kids in a way with a, mm. except I'm just not trained in it. So it doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, you might not, not know the answer to this, but why do you think the kids, you know, lose that, me lose those memories of, of their past life when they kind of come into that kind of adolescent age? There's been a lot of, you know, research done where, where children have these, you know, really kind of um, intense memories of their past life and then they, they seem, it seems to kind of evaporate and, and what, how, what do you think is the cause of that? I think the cause is, is what happens to all of us that we lose our innate sense of self and worthiness and goodness and joy and mm. expectancy that you see when you look into a baby's eyes. All of us mm -hmm. seem to lose this when we turn about four, five, six years old. And I think it is because the conditioning that we face on this planet. You know, we are moving around trauma-based systems, um, mm -hmm. parents and a society that has gone through cycles and cycles of... Um, cruelty, you know, towards life itself, um, based on survival, um, you know, a, a life that is lived within external standards and constructs about who you're supposed to be on all kinds of different levels, instead of a way of thinking or a society that welcomes everything it's in its diversity, because this is really why we're here, you know, we're all very unique expressions of source. So, and that's what we're here for, or else we would come out looking the same and having similar lives. That is not what it is. But we are so indo indoctrinated or conditioned to, to lose the sense of self and the worthiness and expansion as a point of reference, as our true mm -hmm. point of reference, about how to live life and instead to have to listen to the voices of the world as a point of reference about who we're supposed to be. And so we lose our magic, you know, in the process, because the magic that you brought in has never been done before or seen before. And mm -hmm. you led into a way of thinking that it's all about um, fitting in or doing for or accommodating or being part of, then you do not learn to, to, to maintain a connection with your magic. So that magic yeah. has been part of, you know, just having access to different lifetimes, which is really normal coming in, you know, that you are more connected. You know, when you see, when you look into these babies' eyes, you can see that they know as an embodied experience, not as a cognitive notion, but that they are a part of source, God, creator, whatever word you want to use for that. You can see it in, the, in those ones. And, and that's the light that we, unfortunately, um, that, that we lose and you know child psychology says we become socialized that's the socialized. word yeah well it's interesting it's like a lot of what you just said which i totally resonate with is like that turning outwards right as mm -hmm. opposed to turning inwards we kind of spend our you know younger younger years as you say ages four, four five and up really kind of focused on what's happening outside of us and yeah. finding a way to fit in and finding a way to you know adhere to those social constructs and there's like it's almost like a bit of a self-abandonment process that that we go through it is at that at that tender age, which is really, really quite fascinating. Right. And we continue to self-abandon, <laughs> yeah. you know, in, in adult lives. But um, I think what is what is so beautiful about um, having that sense of, 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 of past life kind of memory is that meeting of, of uh, well, that, that kind of meeting and connection with your higher self which is a lot of what we, we talk about and do in our classes with our students is really kind of connecting with our higher self, um, you know, in those, in those moments of mindfulness, um, which I think is so powerful. And, and again, it's that, you know, from, from t always turning outwards to really turning inwards. It's the um, opposite of self-abandonment. You know, it's really mm. being inoculated against more of it by, by having an experience of what it feels like to be in your truth or in your worthiness, in your connection with source. So, mm. you know, moving forward in life from that moment on, you then have something else to refer to instead of just the voices of the world.
you know, and that is, that is the empowerment that I hope I'm helping people um, to bring to their lives, that they can start to feel themselves as they are and to use that as a navigational um, thrust in their life or a way to make decisions based on mm -hmm. what feels right to them rather than um, how they think they, what they need to do or how to fit into, um, you know, society's rules to gain a sense of being appropriate or good enough or worthy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, I, I absolutely adore you and I adore your classes. They're so powerful. And if you haven't um, uh, tried one of these uh, past life regression classes or indeed done a full, you know, um, regression session, I, I thoroughly recommend um, trying it um, if, you're, if you're open to it because I just got so, so much out of doing your cl your classes and i know that they're held thursdays i think it's once a month um yeah so the class that you took is a group regression um, group regression which, yeah you know which is as you notice a pretty taste. powerful yeah, yeah but it's just a taste of like a, a private session a private session uh, one-on-one -on -one is like five hours long and you bring in a list of questions and i dialogue with your higher self in a group session people are exploring one or more lifetimes and you know as you can tell there is healing in that as well and those classes to liberate are done every thursday the, the third thursday of the month from mm -hmm. 7 to 8 p.m um the new location in sherman oaks just opened and i did an in-person yeah. class uh like three days three days ago but in the future we're going to be doing them as a hybrid uh model so both in person and online so, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world you get the yeah. The, the juicy goodness of these classes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, thank you so much for spending the time chatting with me. Um, it's been so much fun meeting meeting you guys on this um, IG takeover today. Uh, I might be doing another IG live today, not sure, but um, I'll be around and um, thank you so much. Sending you Thank you for love. having me. So nice to connect with you. It's so great to see your face. All, All right, right bye. Bye. <laughs> If you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself. For readings, uh, shared time and space with someone who is spiritually connected. An opportunity to get clarity and reassurance, um, guidance on any area of your life that you may feel stuck or not in flow with. So readings are basically um, extremely helpful for you to make decisions that needed to be made. For having clarity on life's questions, healing, um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots, so when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately and sometimes it's hard to see that and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you.